Mr. Harmish Desai from Bhatiwala and Karani Securities, India Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon and welcome to the fourth quarter and full year earnings call of Coromandel International Limited, hosted by Bhatiwala and Karani Securities. From the management, we have Mr. Samir Goel, Managing Director, Mrs. Jaisri Suttagopan, CFO, Mr. Mayur Gangwal, GM Finance. I would like to thank the management for giving us the opportunity to host this call. We would begin the call with opening remarks from the management, post which we, post which we will have a Q&A session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Zeek and Harmesh for organizing the conference call. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, sir, we can hear you. Okay. Uh, we will give an overview of the business environment experience during the quarter, followed by the company performance, and then we'll have the Q&A session. Firstly, when we look at the global economy, the global economy experienced a swift recovery in 2021 with a robust demand revival upstick with an investment and resumption in merchandise trade. The growth was supported by fiscal stimulus extended by the government, leading to a strong consumer demand. As per the World Bank estimates, the economy is expected to grow by 5.5% in 2021. Last year, it had a growth of minus 3.4%. With the advanced economies growing at 5% and the emerging and developing economies growing by 6.3%. As the world steps into the new year, the global economy recovery is facing significant headwinds amid the new waves of COVID-19 infection, labor market challenges, supply chain disruption, and rising inflationary pressures. The war in Ukraine and economic sanctions on Russia have put global energy supplies at risk. Russia supplies around 10% of the world energy, including 17% of the natural gas and 12% of its oil. Further, Russia and Ukraine, which together account for 28 and 18% of wheat and corn global trades, poses significant risk on food security, especially in the low- and middle-income countries. Going forward, the geopolitical uncertainty, COVID-19 flare-up, rising commodity prices, physical stress, and likely monetary tightening can impact the speed of economic recovery, and the World Bank has forecasted that the world GDP to grow at a modest 4.4% in 2022. Coming now to the Indian economy, India has posted a strong recovery during the year and is estimated to grow by 8.9% in 2021-22, subsequent to a contraction of 7.3% in 2021. The recovery has been broad-based at all levels, including aggregated demand, which includes private consumption, having recuperated and surplus their respected pre-pandemic level, and real GDP is expected to surplus the pre-pandemic level of 2019-20 by 1.8%. India starts its vaccination program, started its vaccination program from Jan 2021, and in the course of the year has administered more than 180 crores vaccination. With the vaccination program having covered the bulk of the population, the economic momentum is building up. And as per the Reserve Bank of India forecast, the economy is expected to grow at 7.2% in 2022 India is likely to remain one of the fastest growing large economies in the world. Coming now to agriculture, during the year, Indian experienced a normal southwest and northeast monsoon which supported the higher kharif and rabi sowing. As per the second advanced estimate, food grain output is expected to grow by 2% to 316 million tons. Horticulture sector is also picking up in the last few years and during the year, the production is estimated at 333 million tons, similar to the level of last year. Indian agriculture export across U.S. 50 billion for the year 21-22, a growth of 20% over last year, with major contribution coming from cereals, sugar, marine, and cotton segments. For rendering the 18% export growth registered in FY2021 and logistic challenges in the form of higher freight rates, container shortages encountered during the year, the trend is highly encouraging and signals competitiveness of Indian farm. 
with changing agri landscape, evolving consumer preference, digital accessibility, the Indian agriculture is swiftly getting transformed. The farm input segment can contribute significantly towards promoting integrated crop management, improve soil health through balanced nutrition, developing technology to be the product, improving water efficiency through micro irrigation, offering farm mechanization, and promoting sustainable farming practices. Agri GBA expected to grow at 3.9% in FY21-22 versus 36 last year. The reservoir levels in the country remains at 128% of long period average. With first consecutive year of good monsoon, agriculture continues to be the sweet spot in the Indian economy. Coming now to the fertilizer industry performance, I hope I am still audible. Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Global supply shortage of key commodities continues in quarter four and resulted in higher prices and delay in receiving shipments. The industry has witnessed skyrocketing prices of key raw materials with the Russian uh, Russia Ukraine war and emergence of COVID wave in China apart from the protectionist policies. Shortage of containers continues through the quarter with rising prices and uncertainty in container availability. On the agriculture input side, there has been an increase in demand with record production and high price realization. For the quarter, for the quarter, DAP and complex industry primary sales volume were down by 26%. Uh, last year it was 20, uh, it was 28 lakh metric tons, visibly 38 lakh metric tons last year. Major raw material prices continue to remain high. Government has announced a special package for DAP and three generic gates for rabi season and has supported the industry by ensuring timely disbursement of subsidies. NBS rates for year 22-23 are announced on 27th April 2022. Subsidy approved by the cabinet for the NBS Kharif 2022 from 1st April 22 to 30th 9, 2022 will be rupees 60,938, 9.23 crores, including support to indigenous fertilizer SSP through freight subsidy and additional support for ingenious manufacturing and imports of DAP. For the year, DAP and complex fertilizer industry primary sales volume were down by 15%. It was 160, 186 lakh metric tons versus 2.9 lakh metric tons last year. I'll now hand over to Jayshree to talk about coromandel performance. Thank you, Samit, and good afternoon, everyone. I will now provide the update on the company financial. Coromandel recorded a consolidated total income of rupees 4,304 crores during the quarter and rupees 19,255 crores during the full year. Vis a vis the same quarter. Just one minute, please. Before going on to the financials, uh, let me also cover some of the business aspects. Coromandel displayed a resilient performance during the year, registering a strong growth across the business segment. This was despite the fact that uh, we had uncertain business environment, initially impacted by COVID-19 related interruptions, followed by geopolitical uncertainties, causing supply chain disruptions, and also firm raw material scenario all through the year. Coromandel registered revenue growth of 50% during the quarter and 35% during the year, driven by both nutrient and crop protection business. Coromandel ensured that agri inputs are made available to the farmers in its key operating markets and promoted the use of balanced nutrition, including organic fertilizers, to help rejuvenate the soil and improve farm productivity. Coming to the company's nutrient segment performance, the nutrient and allied business segment revenue increased by 57% during the quarter and 37% during the full year. Companies trust to provide specialized fertilizer and greener solutions to the farmers is gaining further momentum in our markets. We launched two new products in this segment during the year, and both the products have registered a good growth in S&D and organic segments. On the sales front, 
in Q4, BAP plus complex volumes was a 6 lakh uh, tons, slightly higher than last year, which was about 5.9 lakh metric tons. For the year, uh, for year to date, BAP and complex volumes was at 33.2 lakh metric tons, which is 33.5 lakh metric tons uh, during the previous year. Manufactured DAP in complex volume was higher by 6% during the quarter and 2% for the full year. Imported product volumes were lower during the year. It was lower by almost 28% during the quarter and by 19% for the full year. Company's market share in Q4 was 22.1% and for the full year, 17.9%. During the previous year, for the corresponding period, the market share was 15.3% and 15.3% for the full year as well. SSB quarter four sales was at 1.6 lakh metric tons, um, with a decline of about 11% over last year. However, for the full year, the sale was at a record 7.56 lakh metric tons, registering a growth of 13%. Our market share improved to 14% from 12% in the previous year for the same quarter. The commercial teams ensure timely availability of raw material to enable continuous production at all the manufacturing plants. During the quarter, our DAP and complex fertilizer plants operated at 73% capacity and 83% during the year. We produced 6.3 lakh uh, metric tons of fertilizer during the quarter, and for the full year, it was 28.9 lakh metric tons. The fast production continued to remain high during the quarter. Progress on our key capex projects is as per schedule. We work on the major capex, which is sulfuric acid plant has been started and is, and is progressing well. To further enhance the SSP plants, Coromandel has upgraded granulation facilities at Udaipur and has also taken a new facility at Enor on lease for manufacturing of SSP. Our technology teams are working on nano, liquid and fortified fertilizers to further enhance the productivity of the nutrients. On the crop protection side, CPC business registered a growth of 11% in revenue terms for the quarter and 21% during the full year. This is being supported by a good performance across all its segments, exports, B2B domestic and formulation. The increase in raw material cost and the lag in cost and pricing has resulted in certain levels of stress in the margins. During uh, this period, the business received six new registrations, uh, the highest ever in any single year. The business also received 10 Me Too registrations, several endorsements, including label expansions and has submitted those years for novel combinations. The new products launched by the company this year have gained good traction in the market. The business has built in a very rich product pipeline backed by strong R&D capabilities and is also innovators to further strengthen its product offerings in the market. On the manufacturing front, CPC plants operated at a capacity of around 70% for the full year, vis-a-vis 63% during the previous year. Work is in progress, setting up new plants for manufacturing of herbicides at Surigam. We are awaiting approvals from the regulatory authorities to commence production. The retail stores operated by the company, performed well during the quarter, providing all-round value solutions, including products, farm advisory, and mechanization services.
Retail business has improved its operational efficiencies, leveraging technology to reach out to the farmers, and 92% of the stores are currently profitable. We have also seen a good turnaround in the stores in Karnataka during the quarter. In its digital transformation journey, Koromandal has taken significant steps in the last one year with the adoption of business intelligence dashboards, Salesforce productivity tools, and robotic process automation. This has improved the process efficiency and forecasting capabilities of the organization. Healthy reservoir level and expectation of a normal monsoon augurs well for the upcoming tariff season. Coromandel shall continue to work to fulfill the needs of the farming community through its innovative products and farming solutions. I will now cover the financials and the results of the company. Starting with turnover, Coromandel recorded a consolidated total income of Rs. 4,304 crores during the quarter and Rs. 19,255 crores during the full year, vis a vis same quarter prior year where the turnover was 2,872 crores for the quarter and 14,257 crores for the full year. This represents a 50% revenue growth in the quarter and 35% for the full year. Nutrients and allied businesses contributed to 87% share, the balance coming from crop protection business. The percentages are the same for the quarter year. Subsidy versus non-subsidy share of business stands at 82% and 18% during the quarter, and for the full year, 81% and 19%. Corresponding Numbers for the previous year, 74% and 26% for the fourth quarter, and 78% and 22% for the full year. And moving on to the profitability, consolidated EBITDA for the quarter was Rs. 417 crores, vis-a-vis Rs. 262 crores of, the la of last year. EBITDA for the full year is 2,196 crores, vis-a-vis 2,223 2 crores of last year. In terms of the subsidy and non-subsidy share, it stands at 59% and 41% during the quarter and 70% and 30% for the full year. Previous year, the ratio was 55% and 45% for the fourth quarter and 72% and 28% for the full year. Net profit after tax for the quarter was rupees 290 crores in comparison to rupees 156 crores for the corresponding quarter last year. For the full year, net profit after tax to that rupees 1528 crores vis a vis rupees 1329 crores during the previous year. On the subsidy front, during the quarter, company received rupees 2618 crores towards subsidy receipts. The comparative figure for last year was rupees 2943 crores. For the full year, company received a subsidy of rupees 7,077 crores, vis a vis rupees 5,040 crores in the previous year. Subsidy outstanding as on 31st March 22 was at rupees 294 crores, vis a vis 590 crores during the previous year. I will now cover the interest income. During this quarter, company earned net interest income, excluding the in days interest of rupees 32 crores, vis-a-vis interest income of 7 crores in the same quarter last year. 
for the full year company earned a net interest income of rupees 66 crores is a 28 crores of interest cost in the previous year company's balance sheet continues to remain strong with zero debt company maintained a surplus fund in board approved securities and these are earmarked for specific growth related investments which the company is currently pursuing on the forex front we have seen that the rupee has been uh, quite volatile in the last quarter moving in a broad range of 7370 to 7690 company continued to follow a very conservative approach in terms of hedging and managing its forex exposure and this has been managed quite well on the dividend front the company and its board had approved an interim dividend of rupees 6 in february and this was paid out in march the board in its meeting held on 28 april 22 has a, has recommended a final dividend of rupees 6 per share with this the total dividend for the year is rupees 12 per share it corresponds to the dividend of rupees 12 per share declared in the previous year as well thank you all for your interest in coromandel and joining us in our call today we will now open the session for question and answer thank you very much we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchscreen telephone if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles reminded to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time The first question is from the line of Vishnu Kumar from Spark Capital. Please go ahead. Okay. Oh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. So the first question is on the margin. Uh, Sorry to interrupt I mean, you, Mr. Uh, Kumar. The audio is very low. Yeah. Hello. Am I audible now? Yes. Sir. Hello. Yeah. So the first question uh, is on the margin outlook. Uh, can you help us understand how you kind of look at margin, uh, say for the next six months or one year? Uh, given that you know the subsidy revisions have taken place now is there any change in outlook from what you thought previously good afternoon vishnu um we have seen that uh, day before the government has announced the new nbs rate which is also in line with the increase in the raw material prices that we have seen in the industry currently the outlook for raw material continues to be firm and uh, this relief by the government should actually help in sort of offsetting some of the increased costs as far as coromandel is concerned uh, we think the profit levels would be similar to what we have seen in the past we are expecting close to 4000 4500 rupees per metric ton in terms of uh, ebitda on the manufacturing products the backward integration undertaken by the company couple of years back especially on the first phosphoric acid plant has actually helped in the last year's performance and we believe that it would continue to help us going forward as well because the value gap between bought out acid and manufactured acid would help us to retain the margins even as we go along and uh, we are also looking at the bottle making the pa plants both at vizag pap1 and pap2 to see how we can increase the capacity utilization and also move the pa um, production to close to 1350 tons per day so the value gap capture is going to be critical for us and uh, we think that will actually play a very key role 
apart from the flexibility that the manufacturing plants have now developed in processing various kinds of rocks um which also helps us to take advantage of the cost of manufacturing so that as far as uh, fertilizer is concerned on the crop rotation you have seen this year has been um, witnessing high rm prices as well however some of the new products especially on the formulations that have been uh, introduced had helped us to get a better margin on our domestic formulation there are four more products that are planned for the coming year and those would be introduced in june 22 uh, they are combination products as well as uh, products that are coming out of our captive generics and therefore we believe this would help us in further strengthening the margin we did have a lag between the cost and the price which our teams are also trying to address and you have seen that partly helping us in q4 and we expect that momentum to continue on the technical front too we are looking into three new molecules and mpps are uh, coming up for that so overall the crop protection side also we should see the margins on an upward trend yeah help for just couple of follow ups there ma'am so one um on the backward integration uh, so we are roughly around 60% so what is the extent to which we can achieve and what is the limitation for us to uh, not to get to 100% that's one and second thing on the recent subsidy increase whatever that has happened coupled with the mrp price increase whatever we have taken so uh, based on current levels do we have some headroom in our existing npk grades uh, for absorbing any further cost increase these are two follow ups okay so as far as uh, phosphorus side is concerned we used to import somewhere close to 5 and a half 6 lakh tons of phosphorus until a couple of years back currently we are expecting this to be around uh, 3 and a half to 4 lakh tons um with the product mix that we are uh, evaluating this could further come down the tenth operator that had uh, been commissioned at vizar has actually helped us to also concentrate and uh, move the strong asset to kakinada um for us to get 100% captive we may have to look into another cap uh plant and this also has considerations in terms of rock availability environmental clearance approval so on and so forth so currently our strategy is to see how do we minimize the import of phosphorus by increasing the throughput in the existing facilities when we had both pap 1 and 2 coming in the capacity of those was about 1100 to 1150 metric tons per day we are gradually moving it up to say 1300 to 1350 tons per day which will sort of reduce the requirement from the 5 and a half that i was speaking to say 3 and a half to 4 even at no we are now 100% um using our own assets it's only for the kakinada plant which is not a fully integrated plant we will continue to have imported assets so unless we put up another plant we will not be in a position to get to 100% on our own on the other hand we have our jvs in tunisia and uh, south africa where our operation team are going there to further support and see how we can maximize the throughput both these have been having some challenges one or the other over the last 2 3 years in tunisia we had three of our engineers uh, now our uh, partner is also having few more strength so that's the way we are trying to manage the processes as far as the question in terms of how will we be able to manage the cost increases of raw material um it also depends upon the grades 
so there is a mix um there are certain grades where if they are not going to be profitable and there are certain other grades that are going to be profitable uh, the mix is going to play a key role and uh, coromandel will be working on it thank, thank you. you mr kumar may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, we would request you to rejoin the question queue. The next question is from the line of Ankur Perival from Axis Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, congratulations on a good set of number, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so, first question uh, on the crop protection side. Uh, you know, while for the full year uh, we have shown 20% plus revenue growth there, uh, and and there is, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned in the opening remark there are new products launched there, both on the formulation as well as the combination side. Uh, so, just wanted your thoughts in terms of you know how should we look at this business uh, from a two to three year perspective in terms of growth. so i think uh, firstly there is ample scope for crop protection to grow even while we had a strong double digit growth uh, there is opportunity to grow further uh, because the base still has to increase and we are doing several things on that uh, of course we need to ensure full raw material availability uh, to ensure that the technical plants are fully operational uh, so that's one thing and we will continue to continue to grow both our uh what is called our international markets our uh, domestic b2b and also a lot of scope in the formulation business to grow so that's where it is and uh, the other strategies like jeshi was saying is to go for the new generation project and the combination project and we have a huge pipeline of that which actually helps us with better margins and not only that they are more effective uh, use uh, and adopted by the farmers so we see that uh, business doing uh, continuing to do well and uh, we hope that the margins also will improve as and when we keep introducing new molecules so that's been going to be our strategy we'll also look at any other inorganic growth opportunity which may come along with it sure sir and and you know the earlier geographic distribution that you know we had talked about uh, in the domestic market itself uh is that expansion on the distribution network side largely done and we should be seeing the benefit of that and okay, going uh, ahead or it's still working good there's there's uh, there are two things we are looking at business to go one is uh, we have to still leverage a lot while we have done better but there's still a lot of scope for the business to go particularly in our key markets uh, of ap telangana uh, and karnataka maharashtra and mp now one of the strategies which we have is to leverage the strength of our fertilizer distribution to ensure that we fill up whatever gap are available and also to have a stronger uh, agronomic and a demand creation structure on that so there is still a lot of scope at the same time we have say, you know areas where uh, because of the new new molecules including combination which you are having is to address all the growth uh, you know all the applications which the plant may require so we are bridging the gap uh, at some stage uh, you know take the paddy cultivation we only was at 20 to 25% of the need of uh, of crop protection uh, we have moved this up to 60 to 70% including and we are basically more centric towards insecticide and fungicide now we are actually completing the entire cycle so that is the progress which we are making and hence there is a lot of scope uh, you know for our crop protection business to grow uh, given our strength on the on the fertilizer side and also our retail outreach especially in aptg and karnataka sure sir that's helpful sir. and uh, my last question on uh the capital allocation side now on the balance sheet we already have around 3 and a half 2000 crores uh and we are generating incremental give and take 2000 crore plus every year uh we you did mention that we'll be debottling some bit of fertilizer capacity there uh, so any any you know thoughts there in terms of how should one look at you know the capital allocation incrementally so ankur the way we are looking at capital allocation is to see uh, how we can further strengthen the backward integration for fertilizer 
Um, there's a good amount of capex has been planned for it. Uh, we had last year approved the SAP 3 plant, which is about 400 crores, and most of the work will get completed this year. Almost 90% of the work should get completed this year. We're also looking into some deep bottlenecking, as I was mentioning earlier, on the PAP, and also in some of our trains. Uh, apart from the normal topics that would be there. Uh, the main area where we are focusing currently is also to see how we can further strengthen on CPC um, with the new multipurpose plants. The business has come up with a proposal, and uh, we are also looking into further strengthening on the bio side. Now, there are opportunities on the specialty nutrients, especially on the liquid fertilizer. Last year, we had launched a liquid fertilizer, commissioned a liquid fertilizer plant. Uh, we are looking at further expansions there. These are all what we are planning internally, where the capex could be around 750 to 800 crores. Beyond this, we are also evaluating. Uh, any good inorganic opportunity. So that's how we are looking into the um, use of surplus funds and capital allocation primarily is going to be for the high EBITDA businesses, which comprises of CPC, Bio, SMB. Sure, and that's encouraging. Just one clarification, uh, 700 to 800 crores CAPEX is over uh, next year itself or it's over a period of time, over one or two years? The coming year, this year, this year. And and uh, if the broad breakup here will be out of 800, 400 is going for the sulfuric acid plant, and the balance will be for the other projects which you mentioned. Exactly. Okay, great. That's helpful, ma'am. Thank you, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Ankur. Thanks for the Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Um, hello, ma'am. Hello, sir. Good afternoon, and uh, uh, congratulations for uh, the transformation that the balance sheet's seen from about $200 million in March 20 to now with $500 million of cash. Uh, two questions from my side, actually three. Um, I mean, incrementally, uh, however one slices and dices, uh, uh, the conclusion that I get to is that the profitability on a per ton basis for the manufactured uh, business has increased, contribution per ton. Uh, successively, uh, FI 21 over 20 and now 22 over uh, 21. Without getting into specific numbers, just wanted to, if you could probably, uh, you know, give us a sense in terms of what has really driven uh, this contribution um, uh, in this year, if uh, on a descending order, I mean, there is obviously the spread between rock and acid. Uh, uh, there, there are rock procurement deficiencies and maybe perhaps better pricing or some other reason that I may not be aware of. So if you could just give us some sense on what has driven this. That's number one. Um, number two, uh, if, if I look at your crop protection business, the business while on the top line is grown at about 20%. Uh, profitability uh, uh, for, uh, for obvious reasons has not moved up about 6-7%. Um, uh, now, I understand this business has three parts to it. There's the domestic formulation piece, the domestic technical piece, and then there's the export piece. Uh, so if you could give us a sense on um, what went right and where, where were their margin pressures in, in uh, this financial year. And last, uh, in, in the phosphatics manufacturing uh, piece, what proportion of your uh, manufactured phosphatics volumes would be DAP? That's it for me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, let me take your first question in terms of what's driving the profitability. Um, obviously, as you said, the backward integration is key. Our PAPs have been very helpful. We are also looking into SAP as we go along. Rock mix, the flexibility of the plant to process various types of rocks. Uh, smart using, getting the raw materials at the right time at the right time, ensuring the plants are not going through any shutdown. Capacity utilization of the plants are being very good. Control on fixed cost has also been extremely good. Uh, we have been taking selective pricing. The pull of the brand has been phenomenal. Um, for instance, the growth class, the growth smart, growth shakti. I think it's not just the grades. Uh, the agronomic structure has actually helped in terms of creating the awareness and the pull for products. Finally, it's also about the mix management. Uh, given the 
dynamic movement of raw material prices how do we optimize through the right mix so that we maintain our profitability and enhance it over a period in time i think these are broadly the six seven items one can look at in terms of uh, how we been managing and uh, trying to improve our margins as far as the second questions on tpc is concerned uh, when uh, we've seen a good growth over the last year because the previous year we also had a bit of a challenge in the first quarter uh, because of covid our plants were not able to operate at full capacity so uh, plant capacity utilization has been uh, up compared to the previous year the domestic formulation we've seen an increase in our uh, margin profile whereas we have seen some amount of stress in our export market mainly on bank of it as we mentioned earlier looking into new york technicals as well as formulation is going to be the key for us to enhance the margins in the crop protection business and uh, we are currently working on a good pipeline of products yet the third one was on uh, how much of eap do we manufacture for static manufacture yeah in in the prosthetics uh, i would say about 7 8% of the share for dap and uh, we can produce more if we do our other grades of npk which are the dap given the um, consumption of pa in dap is going to be higher wherever we are able to get dap at reasonable prices for import the company has been following a strategy of manufacture as well as imports to meet with the requirements in the market sorry Thank i missed you. that i missed that number was it 8% you said yeah it's between 7 to 8% correct thank you thank you the next question is from the line of bharat shreet from quest investment advisors please go ahead hi congratulations samir and uh, jayshree in for excellent thanks, performance hello yeah thanks you can hear you thanks bharat hello am i audible yes sir are you audible yeah see oh, this is first question is on the this uh, sulfuric acid plant so when is expected to uh, come is how much are this can add to the contribution to the gross margin once it is commission so we will have probably have it by june of next year before goes up for plan so you can expect it to meet the kharif requirement for next year okay and i uh, this is more of a intermediary uh, which we are we have come it helps in the times when the sulfuric prices are high and is a question so we will be reducing our dependence on imported sulfuric acid uh, you know as compared to doing in house manufacturing and it will give us a flexibility for us to look at and do at that time the pricing flexibility to see whether we want to import uh, acid and then burn it or we need to to own manufacturing okay and is that fair understanding that it also is a part of the uh, increasing the allow us to increase the force seed capacity the it's the other way around for you know if you have more force seed capacity you would need more sulfuric acid yeah that uh, for that as a uh, as a import depending on the price of sulfur or you can iron sulfuric acid or you can import sulfur and burn it so that's the way it is it just gives the flexibility it has okay and the, apart any... from the logistics uh, challenges which could happen as you increase your capacity of force seed okay and is there any plan to de bottleneck or expand the capacity on uh, or a complex site npk so we are already doing that uh, we are uh, looking at a line looking at how we can make them more efficient and be quite successful at that so we continue to do that as part of our project at all our three plants you know and looking at how we can get a better throughput through all, all the we have three lines in byzac three lines in kakinada and also one line in nor and we are looking at for the expansion on that now but obviously a lot all also depend upon the price of raw material especially at kakinada and how much we want to earn okay last two question 
uh, what is the current mix of formulation and uh, a technical grade in uh, CPC business and where do we see this next three year time with the kind of new product registration pipeline and we are continuously uh, introducing new product. So our technical plants actually supply both. Uh, they, they, we do export in technical plants, uh, you know, uh, for export market. But at the same time, the technical plants are also used for, for making our formulation. And the whole idea is to increase more and more of our formulated products using our own technical raw material, including looking at combination projects. So that's how we are looking at it. Currently, uh, our capacity utilization is 70 percent. We are also looking at, uh, you know, making more some of the plants more fungible, so that you know we can then look at uh, making molecules which are you know making money and where we are more competitive. That's how we are looking at it. Okay, and continues on to the second. See, what is the total contribution of uh, other business like plant growth, nutrient, organic manure, manure? and retail in overall top line and what percentage of EBITDA it is operating and how do we see the growth in that business? Okay, coming to specialized nutrition which includes organic, we are very happy we are continuously we are having a very strong CAGR growth. We do believe that this business will continue to grow as the farmers get more adopted and with the help of our own uh, sales and agronomist team as people get more adapted to it. So we are seeing this as a future uh, of the business, and this includes, you know, getting into applications like drones. We've already launched what is called a, uh, what is called a liquid fertilizer plant, which can, will give us both, uh, you know, things which can be used for sprays and other things. We are increasing our manufactured. Uh, uh, volumes in specialized nutrition by upgrading our plant because we want to capture the entire value chain on that count. So we do see this as a uh, future growth business and it will continue to do well. And we have integrated the teams and we are expanding below, beyond our current markets where we are. Mm -hmm. So definitely it's a business for the future, the way we see it. And you talk about retail. Our retail main emphasis was uh, three things that happened on retail. Uh, while we grow on the top line, our main thing is to continue to promote our own uh, manufactured products uh, across uh, the retail chain. Also have what is called value additions on new categories which are there, but obviously look at uh, products which are making margins. What we have done this year is to ensure that all stores are getting profitable. We have closed down some loss-making stores, so now 90% of our stores are profitable. We aim to make it 100% before we look at further expansion. And last would be the good news in retail is we are uh, with the inventory management and credit from our suppliers. Uh, we are actually working on what is called a negative working capital. So that's the going to be our story of retail. Thank you, Mr. Shri. One thing, one thing which you are doing in retail is to see how we can get into more into services and charge value for that. So not make it just product oriented and advisory oriented, but also look at uh, the service model in retail. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Shri, may we request that you return to the question queue for follow-up questions. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tejal Shet from Nippon India AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I have two questions. One on the crop protection side. Uh, um, what kind of acquisition uh, are we really looking at, and are we actively looking at any of the acquisitions? And uh, second question is uh, on the export side. Uh, how big uh, the crop protection uh, opportunity can be over the next three to five years? So well, uh, on the acquisition front, we have been looking at a uh, few opportunities. Um, we'll have to see whether it will rectify and it has to be complementary and uh, synergistic to our uh, existing business. So that uh, effort is wrong and we hope uh, we should be able to come up with something in the coming year, uh, provided this 
on the export front obviously there is a very good opportunity across the market coromandel has a very balanced presence across the globe whether it is uh, south america or africa or asia um currently the primary molecule for us is mancozet uh, the crop protection team has identified few more molecules and they are coming up with a proposal to manufacture them uh, hopefully those technicians along with some of the combinations and global registrations that the team has uh, come up with should help us expand our presence in the global market so opportunity there is quite high okay here we are uh, on the export side are we looking at uh, any contract manufacturing on the technical side or it will be purely filing our own registrations and selling it under our brand the current key or business model has been uh, manufacturing technicals holding registrations and selling um, the current thought process has gone through a change uh, meaning that we are also open and uh, in discussions for exploring some contract manufacturing opportunities having said that uh, it's a new line which coromandel would be getting into uh, and uh, obviously it takes a little bit of time because our current model has been purely into technical uh, so this has to be a different uh, segment within the crop protection business itself okay. thank you for answering thank you Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohan Gupta from Edelweiss Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Good afternoon, and congratulations on such a such a strong set of different scenarios. Uh, sir, couple of questions. First is on the recent government uh, subsidy rates. So we have seen that the cost or input cost is likely to remain at the same level what it was in the previous quarter. And if you can also help us, the current quarter of fossil. Uh, phosphoric acid rate which you have uh, uh, negotiated with and with the uh, current subsidy rates uh, revision uh, which is effective from the current quarter do you see that there is a scope for reducing the prices in the market uh, to the farmers or uh, we can see on the basic yeah hi uh, i think the good thing the government has done uh, with the uh with obviously inputs from the industry they have taken the rate uh, uh, you know as per march what were prevalent in the international market as per march no uh, you know and you know if we have to guess how the raw material prices are going to move up uh, given the fact that there is a war which is going on and the fact that uh, you know obviously global commodity prices including agriculture has done well it is going to be anyone's guess Right. So, won't like to crystal ball race here, but a couple of things can help to soften prices. One is, of course, the war in Russia and Ukraine comes to a quick settlement. Secondly, we are putting the pressure. Uh, we are telling the government to use the diplomatic channels to, uh, to get Iran back into business. Uh, that will help uh, prices of certain raw material commodities. and third the big third is here uh, you know because china was a big supplier of raw materials uh, not only for for uh, fertilizer but also for crop protection and what sort of protectionist policies will they have after the season gets over so that's why we are looking at uh, you know how the raw materials prices are going to go as far as uh, the uh, as far as the sulfuric as uh, as far as process is is concerned i believe the key players are still uh, still negotiating to you know come to a fix on the pricing uh, we for one we have diversified our sources so for us it's not a problem we are covered so that's how we are and we'll take it as it when it comes yeah so that's where we are okay. so what are the effective prices of for asset for us for the quarter So we won't know about it till the prices are formed up, which I hope with the subsidy getting announced, it should form up by end of the week. So, uh, but we don't see that uh, with the government subsidies taking care, uh, uh, very well taking care all the input price increase. We, we have uh, we have already spoke to you that uh, you know obviously they want to also have a look at pricing. We have already taken inputs on prices prevailing as of March. Obviously the whole mix can be. 
uh, depending on what the, the thing is. But the good thing news with the government is, firstly, they have done, given the subsidy till the last date, including, uh, you know, which is, which we have to compliment the government for it because it is a huge bill for them. And the second thing, whatever cost increases, if at all, will come, or, you know, depending on how it is, uh, I'm sure the government will look into it. Yeah. So early, very early for us to come in. Okay. Uh, sir, second question is on this uh, uh, crop protection. Can you give the breakup of B2B business and export and the domestic formulation in terms of revenues? Yeah, I think our export is nearly 45%, and the rest is split between B2B and uh, formulation. Sir, what would be the uh, what would be the uh, segment further between domestic and formulation, sir? So I've already told you, export is forty five. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, there is split between the two. Are uh, there is split between the two, roughly? Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dhruv Muchal from HDFC AMC. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Uh, just to uh, correct myself, uh, you mentioned that the PAP capacity currently is about 1,000 tons per day, which is effectively is about 3, uh, 0.35 million tons, and we are planning to increase it to 1,300 uh, tons per day. Is that right? Yeah, the current capacity is about 1,100 tons per day. And we are looking at increasing to 1,300. All right. And uh, any any uh, further details in terms of what would be the capex and by what, when do you uh, see this expansion happening? This is mostly deep bottlenecking, so it would not require any major capex. So definitely, some amount of capex would be required. It is being factored in our business plan for the year. I think on an average, could be about 10, 15 crores. Um, that's a uh, Type of a lot of this has been taken care in the APA, which we have done. A lot also depends on the rock mix that you use. The throughput also depends on the rock mix. And by when does it happen? I mean, is it already largely done? or uh, it, can... it hope to, ha to happen as soon as possible. Okay. So for this full year, largely we should be running at this 1300 tons per, uh, per, ton per day capacity. We hope, uh, we hope it to happen. Yeah. Uh, a lot depends on, and we are closely monitoring that. Sorry, I, 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 I sorry, for my lack of understanding, I'm just trying to understand. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so for my lack of understanding, but uh, how does this operate? I mean, it, does this capacity depend upon the kind of rocks we uh, take, and hence the expansion also happens, or it is? Uh, I mean, it's a fixed rock capacity. Mix, and... uh, rock mix ratio does play a role. Because we have to balance out. Yeah. Okay. So part of this increase is also driven by your expectation of better rock, better rock rates. Sure. Okay. Got it. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirmal Bank. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good evening and thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on uh, your results. So, sir, can you just look at the um, buffer data Sorry, price? Mr. Ramesh, the audio is not clear from your line. Please use the handset mode. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Hello? Yes, better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the first thought is if you're looking at the phosphoric acid prices in the second half, it moved between $13.30 and $15.30, and the subsidy fixed uh, at, uh, in October was perhaps building in the second quarter price plus some increase. So. Uh, I would like to understand how you managed to uh, uh, achieve the kind of growth you have shown in the nutrient segment in the fourth quarter. To what extent is it uh, based on uh, the um, uh, captive production of asset? And uh, uh, to what extent is it based on the price increase you have taken? And uh, secondly, what is the kind of uh, uh, volume growth uh, we can expect uh, for the Kharif in both nutrients and crop protection, assuming that the monsoon is normal? Okay, uh, thanks for making the question. Uh, we have earlier indicated that uh, Q4, uh, the reason for the margin uh, expansion uh, is uh, the factory utilization of our P8 plants. And uh, we were able to capture the value gap between the imported raw material, which is imported PA versus our own uh, manufactured PA. Along with it is uh, the cost controls that have happened. 
and better capacity utilization. Um, now, coming to where we are expecting both these businesses in the current quarter, uh, we are expecting uh, normal season, given the fact that uh, the predictions is for a normal monsoon. The reservoir levels are good, soil moisture conditions are good. So all of this would mean that uh, we will continue to see good demand. And uh, our aim is obviously to see how we can maximize our uh, primarily as well primary as well as uh, for sale during the peak season. That is as far as fertilizer is concerned. Uh, given the high prices, uh, we are going to be very selective in terms of the import of uh, finished products in fertilizer. We are also trying to maximize the SSP production, uh, mainly because there is an increased demand from the farmers as uh, some of them are not able to afford fertilizer at these elevated prices, though the government has given a high level of subsidy. So we will also see a good growth in SSP. Uh, on the crop protection front, uh, uh, again, uh, we are looking at uh, a pretty high double-digit uh, growth in the higher teams. Uh, as we mentioned, the uh, capacity utilization of the technical plants is key, and uh, four new products are getting launched in June. Last year, we launched six products, year before another four, so I think uh, the new products into our portfolio has actually filled the gap and uh, they are also margin accretive. So it's going to be helpful in terms of not only the revenue growth but also improving the margins in the crop protection business. So as a follow-up, um, can you give us the volume growth uh, in the crop protection business for the fourth quarter? So we have the top line growth. If we can get the split between volume growth and how much has come from increase in prices. Uh, I can come back to you on this. I don't have the numbers right today. Uh, but again, uh, we can take it offline if you don't mind. Thank you, Mr. Ramesh. We may request that you return to the question. Give a follow up questions. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Akela from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, uh, Samiji. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, congratulations on a great quarter thank and thank you so much for taking my questions. Uh, just uh, had a couple of clarifications regarding the phosphoric acid uh, segment. So uh, one is just wanted to you know uh, understand a little bit more clearly for myself uh, uh, how much our annual requirement of acid is, how much we are currently producing, and where we expect to uh, go to you know over the next uh, foreseeable future. Okay, um, Abhijit, our total uh, requirements in Bizag and uh, Eno is fully met with the production in these facilities, right? Uh, the, requ uh, the capacity in uh, Vizag is about 4,10,000 uh, tons. And this will also mean that there is some excess acid that is available for shipment to Kakinada, which we've been doing. Uh, Enur has a capacity of about uh, 60 to 70,000 tons of PA, which primarily is used captive in India facility. With uh, two plants in Vizag and then uh, in Or, the requirement for import this year could be anywhere between three and a half to four lakh tons for in terms of import. Again, the product mix will play a very important role uh, because there are certain products which can consume a very high level of PA these are the others. So uh, depending on that, the requirement for Kakinada could uh, vary. Uh, between two and a half to four lakh tons. Okay, understood. Oh, that is very clear. Thank you so much, ma'am. And uh, the second question I just had was on the, uh, you know, the value gap between imported acid and own manufactured acid. Um, so, do you uh, expect this to persist, uh, you know, over a long period of time, or do you see this as some kind of, you know, cyclical up move which could correct uh, at some point in the future? There will always be a value gap between uh, manufactured and imported assets, right? But the quantum would vary depending on the prices. Currently, PA prices are at very elevated levels. And we've also seen the raw prices going up. However, when you buy the raw and then you manufacture, the value gap goes up, right? Uh, when the PA prices settle down, the raw material prices uh, also will come down. 
um, at that time we will see the value gap coming down so uh, i think it's a function of pa as well as uh, rock prices and also to some extent the subsidiary cash prices uh, currently the pa gap is high uh, in a longer period i would expect it to normalize Okay, but uh, sorry, just one last uh, clarification on this. Uh, would we expect phosphoric acid to remain relatively tight in supply compared to phosphate rock over the medium to longer term? Mm. See, phosphate acid. We are currently, uh, you know, few supplies were there unless new capacity comes up, which I'm sure will come up. While rock sources are a lot more diverse, so you need to then set up a phosphoric acid plant to use it. So you know it's a lot more diverse, and uh, one good thing is thanks to our pallet farm, we have the ability to use various type of rocks and various type of acid. Got it. Very clear. Thank you so much, Samiji. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sumant Kumar from Motilal Oswal. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Hi, sir. So my question is regarding uh, if uh, there is any, uh, further price increase in uh, phos and uh, uh, ammonia, so will government is going to in, uh, give an additional subsidy or we are uh, government will uh, give uh, uh, give us a power to increase the price of uh, NPK and DAP? I think uh, there will be. A, we can't say what the government will do. Uh, the government has been helpful. If you see the subsidy prices. uh this has been fixed up till for kharif season so that way they are uh now of course a lot will depend on how the prices behave but what the government is looking from their side is to get long term contracts with all manufacturers and suppliers uh, so as to ensure availability the key thing is to ensure availability of fertilizer during the current kharif season and we'll have to take how it comes so they are monitoring that closely No, but if there there will be a price increase in phosphoric acid, are we going to increase the price? Uh, it's uh, the prices will vary from it depends on thing. It's uh, not just price of phosphoric acid; it's price of ammonia, right? Uh, price of sulfuric acid, a lot of other things. So a lot of numbers of factors will play. So we can't say just on one particular price what's going to be, you know, and how it's going to play. It's also a question of uh, demand and supply in the international markets. You know, government has restricted to increase the price in the past. If the price in increases from here, so uh, we have seen in uh, FY22, government has given additional subsidy apart from the all the prices has been fixed. So, do you think the government will give additional subsidy? Look at the workings. Uh, government has looked at the workings, uh, which is up till March, and there are other factors which will also play. How is the forex behaving? How are other things behaving? So, it's not just one factor alone. Okay. The next question is uh, uh, for the technical um, uh, uh, overall our crop protection export side. We have seen uh, we are struggling with the new product and we are still uh, the higher sales of mancoje. Mancoje newer product uh, development and sales is is becoming a challenging for uh, Coro Mandal and uh, and there is a lot of huge opportunity in uh, technical side. So what are the challenges we have say in R and D side? Are we are trying to fix up? and we are going to have a, a more uh, molecule uh, available to the market so suman uh, as we mentioned earlier uh, the business has identified a long list of of patented molecules then based on the feasibility technical feasibility based on the scale of commercialization we have shortlisted the molecules which can be taken up for technical manufacturing so the r and d team is very well equipped to work out the processes And ensure it is piloted and scaled up. A key for all of this is also going to be the backward integration. So just to do the technical without having proper n minus one, n minus two levels also tied up. Mostly, I prefer it to be in our own plants rather than uh, depending on some sources from other countries. So that process is going on. We don't see any constraint on the R&D front. We don't see a constraint on the capital allocation. We don't see a constraint in terms of the ability of the manufacturing teams to scale up. I think the business case for some of these molecules uh, has been worked out, and I was mentioning just uh, in a couple of sessions before. 
the proposal for multipurpose plant has been put up by the business for uh, evaluation and uh, once it is cleared work will start and we'll have the new technical also coming up in the plant thank you ladies and gentlemen that was the last question for today i now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments yeah thanks everyone for attending uh, i think uh, uh when we look at how the business is uh, for see as far as agriculture is concerned the good thing is uh, that you know demand continues to be good both at the global level and also at the uh, indian level and agriculture as uh, as a economy has done well and governmental is well placed to take advantage of that so uh, that's a positive side obviously uh, like most industries are also facing uh it is a it's a issue of you know on the high raw material cost is the availability and then is the price price pricing but i think number of steps which you have taken in the past and also the steps which you are planning to do including the current capex which is in line is a step in this direction to ensure that you know firstly we make fertilizer and agri inputs available to the farmers uh as he wants it and you know and also supporting we are also hoping that you know over the years uh, you know india will become like it's done for urea at least on the npk side uh we would get some pli scheme where investments can happen so that we are less dependent at least or capture the value gap while we are for manufacturing while we are here so these are these are testing times but i think coromandel as a company we are quite resilient we've also started a journey of digital transformation where we hope to look at efficiencies uh, and real time data both to benefit the farmers but also look at you know how we can improve our efficiencies and also look at new opportunities for growth uh, our balance sheets are strong enough if there's any and uh, if there is any good opportunity which will come our way we will also look at in on organic growth so thank you very much for supporting corum thanks thank you all thank you all thank you Ladies and gentlemen on behalf of Bartlewala and Karani Securities India Private Limited that concludes this conference call thank you for joining us and even now this connect your line 